Welcome to my kitchen. So today I'm gonna to show you the most old-fashioned way of making herbal infused oils. Oil of your choice. So I have got olive oil here. I've also got avocado oil. You can also use jojoba oil. So just depends. Cost-wise, olive oil is usually your cheapest bet. If it's an oil that you're going to be using and a product that you're gonna be using on your face, I prefer to use jojoba oil because jojoba oil is very, very close to your skin's natural pH level. And I use jojoba oil for a moisturizer. And so we have got a couple different size jars here. I've got my quart size, quart size mason jar and a pint size. So two cups, four cups. Now when you are doing infused oil, it is really best that you start with dried, not fresh, herbal plant matter. And the reason for that is because this doesn't have as much moisture in it. We've just got our oil and the dried herbs. And when you've got moisture content from fresh plant material, you run a much higher risk of introducing bacteria into our oil, which we don't want because we don't want it to mold and we don't want it to develop bacteria. Now you have got a special download guide that has got my favorite herbs, which is taken and shared from one of our chapters here, the Thrive Chapter within Handmade. You've got a special download that's gonna break down my favorite herbs that I like to infuse oils with for making a lot of my different homemade body care items for their specific herbal properties. So make sure that you grab that download button there. So this old fashioned method does take four to six weeks. So this is perfect to do when you've got your herbs dried and you're planning ahead and you can have your herbal infused oil ready to go. And this is how it was done in times of old and it's all we're using is the sun's energy. So we're gonna take a quart size jar here and we're going to measure out one cup. And for a quart size jar, you're gonna put about three quarters to one cup worth of herbs in size. And the great thing about these is they already have measured out our different cups. So right here is one cup. And so I'm gonna take, this is calendula. So I have got some dried calendula here. And calendula is a great herb for skin properties. And it's also fun because it's bright and yellow, and so it can also infuse the oil. It's also used as a natural natural dye in cosmetics and different things. So this is kind of a fun one to put in your oil, not only for its medicinal properties, but you can also use it for... So we're gonna go ahead and fill this up. So you're just gonna pour your oil over your herbs. And you're gonna to wanna to leave about an inch to a half an inch head space, and that's from the top layer of the oil to the top of the jar. So we're gonna take a canning lid, and we're gonna put that on there, and this is a great instance where you can reuse a used canning lid. Can't reuse them for canning, but you definitely can for this project. And we're gonna put our band on and tighten it, and then we're gonna shake this really, really good. Now the reason that it's important that you use that head space is because these are dried flowers and with the addition of the oil, they're going to reconstitute a little bit and they're gonna swell up. We wanna make sure that they don't swell up too much and that we've got some room in our jar for expansion. I'm gonna go and set this in a sunny windowsill and try to remember to shake it every day for about four to six weeks and the heat of the sun with that solar warmth will help infuse the oil with the properties of the herb. Now, if you're anything like me, you may not have four to six weeks to infuse your oil before you wanna use it in one of our many fabulous projects that you can make. What's a girl to do when she's short on time? I've got a solution for you. We're gonna fast pace this so that you can make your own infused oil in as little as one day, so you can start it in the morning to make a project at night or vice versa. So this is one of the advantages that we can speed up the process a little bit with our modern technology. So we're gonna go ahead and put our, I'm gonna go about halfway with the Arnica. And then we're gonna fill it up with our olive oil. And I am gonna still leave a little bit of head space on this one as well. So now we're gonna go ahead, put our lid on there and our band. And we're gonna give it a little bit of a shake. Now these happen to look very similar as far as the blossoms. You can see I've got a little bit of the calendula in here and the arnica. Calendula is a little bit brighter, but they're both a flower blossom. So you like to think that you're gonna remember, but you might not always remember. So I always write the herb that I'm infusing on the top 
And then I go ahead and I put the date. So at the time of this recording, it is the 13th of September. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that on there. And just I'm just gonna go ahead and put Arnica on here. Be Labeling is really, really important as so that you don't lose track of which herb you have infused into which oil. I have got the insert here of our Instapot with about two inches worth of water in there. So if you've got a regular slow cooker, just put it on the keep warm function and then we're also using the Instapot as a slow cooker so it's going to be on the keep warm function as well. A jar of your oil and you're going to put it inside and and so you've got the level of the water there that's coming up the sides of the jar a little bit and that is our goal. If you don't have a slow cooker, just use a, lar a pot with water and do it on the stove top just on really, really low with a double boiler system to do the same effect. But what our goal is, I'm actually not gonna put the lid on here because I don't want it to get hot. Our goal is to just have the water between 95 degrees Fahrenheit to 120 degrees Fahrenheit because we wanna just have the oil warm that the herbs are in. We don't wanna actually cook the oil or the herbs inside because we want it to retain all of the great properties that's in the herb that we have chosen. So in my slow cooker, my slow cooker is an older one and its keep warm function is actually pretty hot. So I found that keep warm with the lid off is what worked best for that. So you'll kind of have to do just a little bit of testing with the model that you have to see that the water gets up to about that 95 to 110 degrees Fahrenheit mark to keep it warm. Then you just let it set anywhere from two to eight hours. And that warmth is what helps draw all of those wonderful properties in the herb into the oil, infuses it, which is what we're after. So if you've only got a couple of hours, then just go ahead and do the couple of hours. You can go from two to eight hours. The longer you go, the more of the constitutes of the herb are going to infuse into the oil. So this is just kind of one of those where you get it to the temperature and check the temperature every now and then until you see that it's pretty steady and it's staying there and then you're good to go. So now it's time to strain out our herb infused oils so that we can get busy making all of those fabulous projects. I like to use a Pyrex or some type of container that has a pour spout in it when I'm straining my herbal infused oil into it. So I've got a fine wire mesh strainer here and I've also got inside, I've got it lined with a coffee filter. You can also use cheesecloth, but I prefer to save my cheesecloth for edible projects and this is not one of the edible oils that I'm making. So I'm just gonna use a coffee filter because I can easily dispose of that where my cheesecloth I wash time and time again and reuse that. Now, if you're using larger blossoms or larger herb matter, then you may be able to just use a fine mesh strainer and you don't have to worry about lining it. However, the Arnica, I'll take the top off here, the Arnica has a lot of little, almost like a dandelion blossom when it goes to seed, some really fine hairs in it that I'm not sure will get caught with just the fine mesh strainer. So if you've got fine plant material or herbal material in there, you may want to line it. Now this I let go in the slow cooker using our fast method for eight hours and then I wasn't able, I didn't have time that night to strain it so I actually just let it sit in here and continue infusing at room temperature for a couple of days. So that's fine too. We're going to strain this out. So, And I'm just gonna slowly pour that in there. It'll all go down where we've got it tipped there. And because the oil's thicker, it's gonna take this a little bit to drain out. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pour all of that in. I'll use a spatula to get all of that goodness out. And then I'm actually just gonna, I'll wipe this jar out, but I'm gonna reuse it to put our infused strained oil right back in the same jar. One of my favorite natural remedies is to infuse oil just like this with dried herbs because we can grow a lot of our own herbs at home in our garden, dry them ourselves, and then that's something that we're growing and producing and making at least one of the ingredients from our own land. In fact, many of the old kitchen gardens of old would actually grow herbs specifically that they could then use in their natural remedies or their own natural medicine cabinet. So as you can see guys, the majority of this has strained through. We only had a pint-sized jar that we were working with to begin with but there's still some oil that's left down inside of these blossoms. 
and the majority of it is already going to strain through if it's going to. So to force, we get every drop of infused oil goodness. You're going to gather up at the top here, gather up your coffee filter of these oily herbs, and we're just going to squeeze from the top. Go ahead and squeeze out those last bits of oil that you can. So I'm just gonna take it and squeeze here. And you can see I'm getting quite a bit more out. I'm still doing this though because a little bit of the herbs may come through the coffee filter here. And so I'm doing this over top of the strainer and not just directly over top without a barrier in between to catch any herb matter that comes through. And you can see we've gotten quite a bit more and my hands are quite oily. I'm gonna go ahead and dispose of these spent oil herbs and wipe my hands off. This is why I like to use this pour spout because then it's really easy to just transfer this herbal infused oil right back into the same jars. And it's really important that you label your herbal infused oils in that download guide. You wanna make sure you grab it because I have listed out for you the different medicinal properties of those herbs. So the storage life of your herbal infused oils is I try to use mine up within a year. So if they ever start to have a really off odor or smell funny, then they probably turn rancid and you're going to want to toss them. But I keep mine with the canning lid and band on them down tight in a glass jar and I store them in a dark room that's relatively cool and doesn't get any light and mine last for up to a year. So the herbal chart and both of these methods for making our herbal infused oils are just one of the many recipes and tutorials and information included in my book, Handmade, The Modern Guide to Made from Scratch Living. And in the Handmade Masterclass, not only do you get a physical copy of my new book plus a bonus digital copy, but I'm gonna show you how to take those herbal infused oils and craft and create your own homemade nourishing products. Herbal infused whipped body butter. I'm also going to share my color guide so you can create your own custom tinted and colored moisturizing herbal infused lip balms. We've got two kinds of handmade soap using all natural colorants and scents. We've got the melt and pour method and how to make your own cold process lye soap with these fun custom labels. So we've got how to make your own beeswax candles in a mason jar and many, many more fabulous bonuses, coupons, and resources to help you create your own natural handmade nourishing products. But hurry, the early bird special is only available for a very limited time. So you wanna make sure that you jump over there and see all of the wonderful things that we have waiting for you.